But the wind's about to die, and so we took off this evening, and we're setting sail now for Komodo Island. We're gonna go check out those dragons. They have a what? Hey, me finish. Two penises? Yeah. Two. Yeah. Yeah, I really am so super stoked about seeing the Komodo dragons. But it's a beautiful evening, and can you see what's behind me? Beautiful sunset, and all our kite gear is still hanging out there drying. Who does that? I think it's hilarious. We just like hung it up, and left it out, and dried out, and set sail. <laughs> I guess it's more like we're moving our home. We're pretty chill about stuff like this, but uh. Traveling with your home may be one of the best ideas anyone ever came up with. I mean, Van life gets close, but out here, there's no stoplights or speed limits, no traffic jams. Just turn on the autopilot and go to bed. Well, occasionally you need to check on things. I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Twenty countries later, and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. Where are the hell are we? We're almost, we're in Indonesia and we're near Komodo. And we're going to go see the dragons tomorrow. We're going to Rincha. <clears throat> what do you think? We'll check that box and yeah. we'll be on our way. It's beautiful here though. This area around Komodo, it's like a desert. But it's been super great catching up with friends and there's little walks and mooring balls and I think Ben is thinking of going for a foil today, but... What's the, the wind speed? The hammock keeps calling back. Wind speed is eight knots. Uh, 10 meter, 10 meter and a foil. Eight meter and a foil. Yeah, that's borderline, man, eight knots. It's been so good to catch up with friends though. Like it's been, it's been, 10 months since we've cruised with another boat and I mean we've only been cruising with them about three days right now but it's been fun it's been fun it's just nice to have fellow cruisers around it's something to consider if you go way off the beaten path it's fantastic like there's those moments that you get when you're alone and uh, you're the only boat in the anchorage it's it's pretty incredible but on the flip side you know too much of a good thing can also be a little bit sad and uh, it's great to be back in a bit more cruising territory. So this area around here is cruised by cruisers a lot more than up north where we were like in the Philippines, so. What's that? Oh, just completely ignore me. Well, you're just yelling at the camera. I'm sorry, mister. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> Indonesia's pretty funny, man. This is our second harbor, and look how close the boat is. They're literally touching our dinghy. Something about close anchoring in Indonesia. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Thank you for moving. <laughs> They've decided to move, so it's good. It's good. It's very good. How's life, man? Life's good. Set up a new hammock. <laughs> we caught up with friends and that hammock's all over the back of their boat and it's, we usually just popped it on the front and Ben's like, this is the best idea. I've expanded the cockpit by 50%. <laughs> it's pretty sweet, man. And it's in the shade, which is nice. Don't get all sweaty. And we've got friends right there. We've got a YouTube right here. I mean, we should probably start making a new video. We're just pulling into Komodo National Park and there's a whole bunch of fishermen here as we pull into this area. It's all mangrovey. It's like the African queen. We're going up a little inlet here. You know what's crazy is these boats. Every country has a different style of boats. Like Vanuatu had dugouts. In Papua New Guinea they had dugouts with paddles on either end. Not Sailing. just a single paddle with a sail. And then the Philippines had outrigger canoes. And here they have these little boats with like a house on the back. It's cool, check it out. I guess fish 
fishing is allowed in the park. Maybe it's just a park for the dragons. Tomorrow we're gonna go for a hike. Tonight we're just gonna sleep there. We're gonna have first thing, try and beat the crowds. We're going to check out the dragons. They eat everything except the head and that's where their poop is white. Kind of funny, eh? It's full of calcium from all the bones. So these are the heads that they found lying around here of the Komodo kills. I mean, this is the most we've seen. It's uh, buffalo poo. I think it's buffalo poo. It's not warm. Well, maybe it's warm. It's fresh. It's fresh. Oh, hello, my friend. Are they friendly? Sometimes. So right in these bushes, there's a water buffalo, and that's what these Komodos, Komodos eat. And there's monkeys over there. But. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called in your language, Chris? Bahasa? In Bahasa? Yeah. Karbau. Karbau. Kar karbau? Yeah. Karbau. And would a Komodo eat a whole buffalo? Yeah. yeah. It takes many days, though. Like, uh, maybe one day. Yeah. We have seen, but not only one Komodo. Oh, maybe. all the Komodos come yeah. in and eat, yeah. That's a big amount of meat. In my language, Kaaba. 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 <coughs> where, where the Muslims go to, like, uh, pilgrim. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kaaba. A stable population of 1,500 lizards on this island. So far, we haven't been lucky enough to spot one in the wild. Hello, man. Oh. Do you see something? We just, we just spotted a Komodo in the wild. This is pretty exciting stuff, man. These things can run fast. We're gonna go in for the shot. I saw something like a head. I don't know if it is Komodo or not. How far? It's always so exciting when you spot them in the wild. Like, it's so cool. And I've seen about 20, but they're all right by the shacks where we came in. So they lay eggs. So June, July they mate. So right now they're mating. And we just saw that, which was... He, the male seduces the female. He seduces her by lying on top of her? Yeah. Licking, <laughs> scratching. <Yeah. laughs> that, that wouldn't work in the human world. Hang on, I just zoom out. What do you think, Ben? So this male is seducing the female by laying on her, scratching her. Licking. I've never tried this personally, but I might have to. <laughs> How long did they mate for? Five or six hours. They have a what? Hemi penis. Two penises? Yeah. Two. Yeah. They use uh, both. Really? Yeah. Apparently they have two penises and they mate for about five hours and if one penis gets tired they use the other one. Seems pretty logical. <laughs> Look at you just sitting there on her, that poor girl. We seem to hit all the mating seasons just right, don't we then? <laughs> and then September they lay their eggs in the, these holes and they dig them? Yeah, incubation time uh, eight to nine months. Wow, like human. Think they're as smart as us? No, he doesn't think so. So when the eggs hatch, there's only about two to five that survive in the first hatch. The ones that are like the lucky, like early, I don't know, early to be born, <laughs> eat the rest of them. And then they run off to the trees. And they have the, the saliva naturally already that's poisoned. So it's like they're killing all their brothers and sisters and then they scurry off and the parents don't have anything to do with it. The mom lays them, eight to nine months later, two to five of them hatch and they eat the rest and off they go. 
and uh, it keeps the population down, so it's like natural selection, is what Chris is telling us, which is fantastic, because I guess there can only be so many water buffalo and deer on the island for them to eat. You might have to start eating humans if there was too many. So these are the nests over here, they're super cool. They dig two meter deep holes and they dig several, so it's like a confusing thing, So you, and they only put the eggs in one hole. Monkey fight. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and just following our journey. It's so much fun to share it all with you. And stay tuned, there's so much more coming. We have huge plans for the future. It's gonna be crazy.